It's often called the world's oldest profession, but for many countries, prostitution has become big business. Right now, there's around 40 million prostitutes at work. That's more than the populations of Canada and Australia. The sex trafficking industry brings in billions of dollars, both legally and illegally, around $58 billion in 2012. And it's legal in more than 50 countries, including Germany, Argentina, Italy, and Switzerland. Another one of those countries is Mexico. For years, the country has had a serious problem with men and women being forced into prostitution. But what has been little documented is that Mexico City's metro has become a center for sex traffickers. John Holman went down into the tunnels to investigate in an exclusive report for CCTV. Evening in the Mexico City metro. Passengers stream out of trains to meet up on the platforms and corridors. Couples reunite after a long day and wait to take the train home together. But less romantic connections are also taking place here. What before was rare and hidden has become widespread and increasingly obvious. Prostitution is spreading throughout these tunnels. We're using a hidden camera to film in one of the biggest stations. Men and women of all ages are selling themselves for as little as $12. I asked a male prostitute who didn't want to give his name why more sex workers are heading into the metro. Up there, the number of people passing you varies. Down here, it's easier to get a client. They come from all directions. Prostitution is legal in Mexico, but pimping is not. As we talk, someone is circling us. He's one of several men we see keeping watch over the sex workers. In Mexico, up to 20,000 people have been tricked or coerced into walking the streets, and whole areas like this one are controlled by gangs of pimps. But since the 2012 law made trafficking illegal, police have been cracking down on those who sell others for sex. That's forced traffickers in Mexico City to move those they control into areas like the metro, says Herman Villar. He runs an organization helping women leave prostitution. In Mexico City, there is a police department against trafficking, and that's working well. And this is squeezing the traffickers who are looking for where they can commit this crime. They found a safe space in the metro. The police in the metro don't do anything. There is a web of complicity between sex traffickers, metro employees, and police says Celeste, a former prostitute. She was forced to sell herself in the metro until a few months ago. Who are the pimps paying so that prostitutes can work down there? The police, the people who arrange spaces to have sex within the metro, the vendors, even the thieves, so that they don't bother you. We've heard that areas like storage rooms are being rented by metro employees for prostitution. Is that happening? Yes. We share a room in which they can put up a couple of sheets and divide into three, because they are making money out of it. Metro researchers and non-governmental organizations I spoke to back up Celeste's claims. I put those concerns to Joel Ortega, the Metro director. I recognize that there are prostitutes that go down into the metro when it rains or when there is not enough work above, but not that there are rooms in the metro where prostitution occurs. We haven't seen a relationship between prostitutes and pimps, no. His response at odds with what we had seen and what Celeste had told us. After years of sexual slavery, she now lives in a safe house provided by Herman Villar's organization. She plans to be a chef and is trying to put behind her what she endured in the metro. Down below ground, the evening rush hour begins. Passengers fill these tunnels, hurrying home. The men and women they pass have just begun their working day. For them, 
leaving is far less easy. John Holman, CCTV, Mexico City. And that report is part of our special series, Mexico, reports from the underground. To see more from CCTV's John Holman and his crew in Mexico City, visit our website. That's at cctv-america.tv.